Proceeding likewise, question number 26 has been set from gravitation. It's a uniform sphere of mass m. The sphere without cavity had mass m. And from that, a spherical cavity has been taken out of radius r by 2. And I need to calculate the potential at center of this cavity. So, of course, it's a good use of principle of superposition. First, we'll assume there is no cavity and we'll find the potential here. Then we'll find the potential due to this solid sphere at the center. We'll subtract it. So, V1 is the potential due to the whole sphere had there been no cavity. That would be minus of G M 3 R square minus R by 2 whole square by 2 R cube. V2 is the potential due to this solid sphere at the center and that would be minus G mass would be M by 8. It's quite obvious because the radius is halved by radius is R by 2 into 3 by 2. Because generally we know the potential at the center of a solid sphere is minus 3 by 2 times G M by radius. That's almost common to all. So minus 3 by 2 G mass is m by 8, the mass of this one, radius is r by 2. And from this now, the required potential would be V1 minus V2 and that will lead us to option number 4. So that was about question number 26. We'll move to question number 27. Question number 27 from laws of motion block A and B respectively having weight 20 Newton and 100 Newton coefficient of friction between this is 0.1 and B and wall is 0.15 and in this situation we need to calculate the friction applied by wall on B now if I split the free body diagram comes in this way for A that's F and an equal reaction F would be there and this is 20 Newton. Now particularly in this question the value of F has not been given. If the value of F had been given then we could have easily checked whether this force exceeds the limiting or not. Since that is not given so I have a single option to assume that the whole system is in equilibrium. So if this is in equilibrium the friction here has to be 20 Newton and that would be static in nature. Likewise, the same reaction F would be there and that would be 20 and this is 100 Newton. So quite obviously this is at rest. So the friction here has to be 120 Newton and that goes to the first option. For question number 27, the answer is 1. Let's move to question number 28. Another beautiful question, yet again from electrostatics. It says, a long cylindrical shell carries positive surface charge sigma on upper half and negative minus sigma in the lower half. The field lines best resembles two. Of course, it's a cylindrical shell and the upper half is a positive one, lower half is negative. But if you see that positive uniform, negative uniform, the whole thing can be reduced equivalent to a dipole structure. All negative and positive equal one can be accumulated and the net dipole structure would be in this way. So the field lines now has to be as that of a dipole arrangement. So it's very, very conspicuous that would go for option number three. So question number 28 has the third option. Let's move to question number 29. 